One thing I always appreciated about arcade games was the fact that nothing stopped its technological rise. Every year was marked by massive upgrades to sounds and visuals, and we never got stuck with a certain platform for any length of time. This also benefited gameplay, with big jumps and in innovation happening almost at a breakneck speed. What started as simply knocking a ball back and forth quickly progressed to massive machines that used your body as part of the experience. It's why I love the arcade in its heyday. It was a wild mix of technical innovation, amusement park rides, and unique gameplay that home machines could never hope to keep pace with. And in Volume 5 of Arcade Treasures, we are going to look at even more games that you just gotta play. We have a great mix of genres in this one, so let's get started. In 1996, Tecmo released an all-female fighting game, and no, I'm not talking about Dead or Alive. Toki Densho Angel Eyes was a 2D fighting game with characters that were both hand-drawn and pre-rendered. It features a nasty combo system where each hit amplifies the damage, making some combos almost complete life bar destroyers. It also has homing attacks that send you dashing straight into your foe to begin these killer combos. The mix of art styles can be jarring, particularly since the hand-drawn stuff looks so much better. Since it's Tecmo, you of course have massive breasts shaking with every other frame of animation, a trademark they would continue with their 3D polygon games. I really like how aggression and multiple consecutive hits are rewarded, and the action is fast and fluid. If you like 2D fighting games, this one has enough going for it to have a look especially since it has a kick-ass soundtrack as well. I actually first heard about this through its Japanese PlayStation port that came out the following year, and didn't discover the arcade version until Maine many years later. Neither version was released officially outside of Japan. In 1994, Taito released the Weird and Wonderful Chase Bombers, a Mario Kart clone that mixes 2D sprite scaling with kart combat to some pretty special results. When you start out, you get to choose your vehicle, each with their own set of strengths and weaknesses. Once on the road, you have to defend yourself at every turn, because the aggressive AI is constantly littering the road with things for you to crash into or things that'll blow you up. Fortunately, you get a chance to do some damage yourself and you too can sling weapons of destruction anytime you want. The visuals here have that incredible sense of movement that only a good sprite scaler was capable of. It's bright, colorful, and runs smooth as butter. The gameplay puts an emphasis on track position and combat over speed and timing, and it's a hell of a good time because of it. The original arcade cabinet was dual screen and supported two players by default, though finding one of these in the wild is pretty rare these days. Luckily, MAME is here to help preserve these types of games, and it plays well enough to capture some of the magic of the arcade original. American Sammy released Zombie Raid in 1995, a 2D light gun shooter that had you doing battle with grave robbers, werewolves, zombies, and a bunch of other classically themed monsters. It was essentially like so many other gun games at the time. You go to investigate some strange happenings, and all hell breaks loose. You must rescue a few people and chase down the zombie infection to a castle and find its source. You get the usual upgrades associated with these games like machine guns, shotguns, and extra health. And of course, there are boss fights to contend with. This game also has a hell of a final act where you must place hidden crystals you find during the previous stages in proper order to proceed. If you missed one or more, you are greeted to a bad ending that sends our hero to his death. 
The only way to see the actual final stage and ending is to collect the crystals, place them properly, and live to tell the tale. I really like the pace of this one and the stages are long and varied. The 2D images are well animated and still look great now. The arcade cabinet had mounted shotguns you actually had to pump to reload, adding to the awesome factor immeasurably. Bring a friend along and you have a nearly perfect multiplayer experience. Main plays it, though getting the mouse calibrated is a huge pain in the ass. In 1991, Data East released Caveman Ninja, also known as Joe and Mac in the arcade. It features co-op run-and-gun gameplay where two cavemen are trying to rescue their women from a rival tribe. You get access to weapon upgrades like boomerangs, wheels, electricity, fire, and even shadow attacks. Boss battles are here and usually fill the screen with some horrific monster trying to kill you. I really dig the visuals here. There's loads of stuff on the screen, the color and detail were amazing at the time, and there are tons of comical animations all over the place. It's genuinely challenging too, even in two-player mode. I've seen a number of home ports and versions in the years since, and it even has modern digital representation on systems like Nintendo Switch. If you're the kind of player that enjoys a challenge and great graphics, this should be right up your alley. The Japanese version has an opening scene where the women are being kidnapped which was removed from other versions of the game. It also has a few sequels out there if you enjoyed this one. Curry Kenton is a strange 1988 release for a number of reasons. First, it wasn't released on any 8-bit console or computer at the time, despite being a Taito game and being a beat-em-up, which were crazy popular at the time. No NES version, no Master System version, not even a shit port to the Amiga or C64 that I know of. And second, Curry Kenton is actually a Japanese dish of water chestnuts and sweet potatoes, making me wonder where the heck the name came from. The gameplay puts you in mind of Kung Fu Master, though here you get mid-bosses, some platforming, and it plays quite a bit faster. The visuals are clearly inspired by popular 80s Japanese anime, and I still think it looks good for being so old. The story has our hero infiltrating an underground base, trying to rescue a father and daughter being held captive. Of course you have a bunch of assholes and capes showing up at the end of every level trying to stop you, and some of these guys are crazy hard. This did get an eventual release in the Taito Legends collections that hit the various machines some years later. Main plays it fine too, so give it a go if you like the old school look and feel of games like this. In 1989, the Toa plan developed Demon's World was released. It's a side-scrolling running gun that has two ghost hunters trying to survive until they discover what has unleashed Hell on Earth. It isn't too dissimilar from other running guns of the time. Enemies flood the screen and you need to run and jump to avoid them. You do get access to a bunch of different power-ups such as lasers, spread shots, and bombs, and these items really do make or break the difficulty of this title. Get stuck in an area or at a boss with something you can't use well, and I guarantee you a trip to the continue screen multiple times. Thankfully, the two-player mode is awesome, the visuals are nice, and the stage variety is excellent. It's one of those games that really stands the test of time if you gain from this era, and the challenge definitely keeps you coming back. The only home version this saw back then was under its Japanese name, 
Horror Story, and it went to the PC Engine, but it got a pile of changes that still make the arcade version the one to play. I really wish this had been released on the Genesis back in 89 or 90. I think it would have been an excellent addition if they kept that co-op multiplayer intact. Irem released the horizontally scrolling shoot 'em up Fire Barrel in 1993, also known as Air Assault. This is another one I wouldn't have discovered if it wasn't for Maine. I have never seen or heard of a home port of this, and it was only while browsing my Maine list that I ran across it many years after its release. The gameplay very much puts you in mind of Raiden Trad, including the power ups, nuke attacks, and even the enemies. The visuals are gorgeous with touches like wavy water, parallax scrolling, and lots of little animation effects for destroyed vehicles. The gameplay is pretty simple, but tried and true shooting action. You have access to traditional power-ups like spread shots, wave attacks, and lasers. And of course you can bomb the screen when you get in trouble. The real star here though is the killer soundtrack. No freaking joke man, I love the music in this game. When a shoot 'em up has great music to play to, it elevates it to another level, and it makes all the difference here. It takes a competent experience and turns it into an exceptional one. It also has two player co op and the challenge to make that even more special. You won't find many ways to play this one other than Main, another game preserved that would have otherwise been lost to the ravages of time. Speaking of games I discovered thanks to MAME, Finest Hour falls into this category as well. This was a 1989 run and gun by Namco that was only released in Japan. You pilot a mech in side-scrolling action that puts you in mind of a mix of Target Earth and Psychic Killer Taramaru. You have jump jets that allow you to fly and boost around for a limited time, and you have the ability to run by pressing twice in either direction quickly. There's no life bar here, instead you have a temperature gauge that must be kept in check as you take damage. If you overheat, your mech crashes and burns, ending your turn. If you stay away from damage for a while, your gauge will slowly cool down. I like the look and feel of this one, particularly the gameplay that very much mirrors the previously mentioned Target Earth quite a bit. To my knowledge, there are no home ports of this, and thanks to its Japanese-only release, it isn't easy to come by outside of emulation. I'm a sucker for running guns, robots, and parallax scrolling, so this one was a win-win for me all the way around. For all you Battle Garega fans out there, I highly recommend you take a look at 1999's Battle Back Raid by 80. It's another vertically scrolling shoot 'em up with score and difficulty systems built in based on how you play. The more aggressive you are, the more you shoot, the more you get powered up, and the better you perform, the harder the CPU fights back. Luckily this game has multiple modes for you to play and hone your skills, including a training mode that lets you have easy access to the first four stages, a normal mode that lets you play most of the game, and an advanced mode that challenges the hell out of you with two additional stages. There's also a boss rush mode for you shooter savants. You get to choose from up to nine ships with various weapon attributes, some of which do need to be unlocked. It has an option system that allows you to set how your secondary attacks are used, which often is different ship to ship. I really like this one not just for its visuals and gameplay, but it's another one where the music really elevates it. Many of the tracks are excellent and worth listening to outside the game. It's an all around exceptional title that proved that even in 1999, these games had so much to offer fans of the genre.
Irem was one hell of an arcade game maker and 1989's Legend of Hero Tonma is up there as one of their best. This action platformer features heavy run and gun elements and a vicious difficulty. There's never a break here and enemies constantly flood the screen, hell bent on killing your little ass. You have to collect keys to get past doors to get deeper in the stage, but luckily there are power-ups along the way to assist you. It's a great looking game for the time period of its release, and it was brought home to the PC Engine the following year. Both the Wii and Wii U got digital virtual console releases as well. It has two player co-op to ease the difficulty a bit, but this is still one tough game overall. It kind of reminds me of Capcom's Willow arcade game, and that's no bad thing. We end the episode with Double Axle, a Taito game that was released in 1990. This featured monster trucks and is one of my favorite games from them. Being a big fan of giant trucks as a kid, you can imagine my excitement of being able to pilot one of these behemoths. Best part of this game was that you had four types of races to choose from. You had a cross-country race that was pretty much just like your other standard racing titles of the time. A mud bog race which was harder with more obstacles, a freaking demolition derby which had you basically running over everything under the sun to gain score, and an ice road race that was really difficult thanks to the terrain being so hard to navigate. Everything about this game was my 15 year old self's dream come true. It uses sprite scaling to convincing 3D effect, the different modes adds tons of variety, and it focused on the thrill of speed and destruction, my two favorite things as a kid. Most of the cabinets I found in the wild were single player, but there are two player sit down models as well. If you run across either one, park your ass and give it a whirl. I guarantee you that any fan of this type of game will absolutely love it. I always thought this would have made an excellent Sega CD title, but it never came home on anything at the time. Main doesn't emulate it 100%, but it's good enough to have a solid play session. One thing I try to do with these types of videos is stress the importance of projects like MAME. There are thousands of video arcade games out there from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and only a small percentage of them have been preserved with modern variants. Most have been utterly forgotten, and if it weren't for emulation, they'd be gone forever. While I do not have much sympathy for software pirates stealing games you can still easily buy today, this is a case where ROMs and emulation are an absolute necessity. Some of these titles offer up simple but endearing gameplay that reminds me of a time when software didn't need voice acting, massive budgets, or polygons to have a good time. All you needed was some responsive gameplay, some catchy chip tunes, and a desire to see the end with a little hard work. I'm confident that there is something here for everyone and hopefully you enjoy these episodes as much as I enjoy making them. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.